What's the funniest or worst thing someone has said behind your back, not knowing you're fluent in that language? This is from the mid to late 80s sometime. My mother is Pakistani, but she doesn't look like it. She's quite pale and is pretty westernized. She and two white friends of hers went on a trip to India. Urdu, native language of Pakistanis, and Hindi, native language of India, are basically identical languages. My mother went to a video store to buy a few movies, VHS. While there, she had asked for a master print. This conversation was going on in English. The clerk yells for his subordinate to get a shitty quality print of the movie so he could sell her one version and charge her for the other. Well, when the guy gets there with the movie, my mother kindly asks him to go back and get her the master print that she had asked for in Urdu or Hindi. The guy turned to Casper the friendly ghost shade of white and apologized profusely. A guy I worked with in a bar was French, and I hadn't said that I spoke it because he was a knob and my French is appalling. We were working one night, and I knocked a pint of half-poured Murphy's off the broken drip tray that not even idiots leave drinks on. I swore and grabbed some tissue to clean it up. He grunted out, Shit, for fuck's sake, you stupid bitch. My French might be bad, but I make it my business to have learned as many swear words in as many languages as possible, so I understood what he said. I just stood up, looked at him, and said, at least I'm not so much of a stupid bitch that I'd call you names in a language I didn't think you spoke, asshole. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant votre faire foot through duc. Fuck you, asshole. I then just proceeded to clean up the pint and pour another for the customer who was by now pissing himself. I'm an American-born Vietnamese, but I'm very tall and fair-skinned. Uncommon to us Viets. Most people mistake me for Caucasian, or mixed at the very least. I'm also assuming people don't think I speak Vietnamese when they look at me. Once, when I was about 13, I went for a pedicure at a Viet-owned nail salon, and damn, these ladies were talking smack about every single customer in the store. They were making some pretty racist remarks about the black male customer sitting next to me, and commenting on how disgusting they found his feet. They also talked about how cheap my friend and I were for not wanting to pay an extra $5 for flower designs on our toes. And they also went on and on about personal problems, including their apparent rat problem. When I went up to pay at the end, I told my nail technician in Vietnamese, Thank you, but I won't ever come here again. You're incredibly rude. She was visibly embarrassed as we walked away. Feels good, man. I'm a white American, and I learned a bit of Cape Verdean Criollo during my BA studies. Afterwards, I started a job in a supermarket cutting fruit and washing lettuce where I shared a workspace with three Cape Verdeans. For the first few days, I kept my nose to the grindstone, wanting to make a good impression on my new boss. At the end of the first week, two of them started talking about me, that I was really fast and didn't fuck around. Then the other woman chimed in and said she thought I was a sketchy asshole because I never socialized with them. I turned around and told her in their language that I didn't realize I had been hired as fourth member for their buddy group. Their faces were priceless. We all had a good laugh and the atmosphere became much more relaxed in our little cooler. I lived in Korea for several years. For those of you unfamiliar with the culture, they have these bathhouses called Jimjil Bongs, which are usually segregated by sex as everyone walks around completely naked. It's quite a bit to get used to, but they're wonderful and very cheap. Sort of like spas in the US. Various different pools, some hot, some cold. Some have little fish that will eat the dead skin of your toes. You can get a massage or a haircut. Most of them are quite upscale and there's no hanky-panky, other than the awkwardness of having little children, some of whom might be your students, staring at, pointing, and laughing at your genitals for being so big. No, really, that's what happens. Anyway, I used to go a few times a week and every so often I'd go with a few other Western colleagues. Go up to the spa, then down to the beach for some drinks and dinner before heading to the bars kind of a thing. We're all in the locker room starting to get undressed when one of the Korean men started to get a little aggressive with us in English about whether we should be allowed to use the facilities. One of my closer friends was a judo instructor. He was older than the man who confronted him. I don't think this would have been tolerated if he was younger, who spoke Korean fluently. 
Apparently, the man turned around and said to the rest of the locker room something to the effect that this establishment is a shithole because they let gorillas in, referring to our hairy bodies. Anyway, my buddy starts to hoot and pretend like he's a gorilla. Hunching over, he ambled around in a semicircle to get in front of this guy and then, like he was a gorilla, started to pound his chest and back the guy into a locker. The rest of us kind of understood what was going on, and instead of laughing, we started to hoot like gorillas too. It was amazing. The man fled like he had seen a ghost, and the rest of the locker room looked like it was simultaneously the funniest and most horrifying thing they had ever seen. Not me, but I had a good friend in high school who was Chinese, and we went out to an authentic Chinese restaurant, i.e. not Americanized Chinese food. We were chatting in English and using normal teenage slang, and the servers must have assumed that he didn't speak Cantonese, which they did, and they started, as he says, calling him a fake Chinese and a traitor to his people. He got red in the face and started cursing them out in Cantonese. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. They comped the meal. My ex is Portuguese, so I became pretty good at understanding it and was also taught select phrases and sentences. I was at a bar when I heard someone speaking Portuguese saying he wanted a blowjob from the redhead. Me. I turned around and gave him a look. He saw me look and started talking to me inappropriately, to which I responded, You're bothering me. Go jerk off, in Portuguese. He looked totally taken aback. He went bright red and his friends thought it was hilarious that I shut him down in his native tongue. Back when I worked at Walmart, a Russian couple came into the store and asked for blank audio CDs. I walked them to the electronic shelf with CDs and CRRWs. They said no, this is not what they need. They need it for professional studio recording, and there should be a special version for it. No, this lady was dressed in some stupid looking mink and was the single snobbiest looking cunt I had seen in my one year of working at the Mart. I then said if it is designed for professional audio equipment, I highly doubt Walmart would carry it. At which point she turns to her husband and in Russian says, this retarded dumbass doesn't know anything. His mother must be ashamed. To which I replied in Russian, at least my mother isn't a dumb cunt trying to start a recording career with supplies from a Walmart. She went white and stormed away. I'm white and I lived in China for a while. One day when I was on the subway, these two guys were talking about what beautiful babies we'd have together. I looked him dead in the eye and winked. He moved cars after that. I manage an arcade with a predominantly Hispanic clientele, so many people assume I don't speak Spanish. It's hilarious. Guy calls me over to the foosball table and in broken English tells me that no balls come out when he put in his money. I check the coin mech and the ball release when his buddy comes back and asks him what happened. In Spanish, the guy clearly says, nothing, I just wanted to play. If you tell him it didn't work, he has to give you a free game. I turn to him and say, unless you admit to lying about the money, now get out of my arcade. The look on his face was priceless. This happens way too often. I was getting my eyebrows threaded by an Indian lady in Boston. I'm quite light-skinned for an Indian, but I have really dark and thick hair. Anyways, they were speaking in Punjabi and started complaining about how thick my hair was for a white girl, and some other mean things that I don't really remember, but I responded right back in Punjabi. They really had no idea that I was Indian, and I could see it on their faces. Also, now that I live in New York City, it's always funny when I have an Indian cab driver and understand everything he's saying. There's been plenty of times that I've been with my friends and have heard the driver saying things about us on the phone. I always say something in Punjabi when I'm paying or leaving the cab. I am half Mexican, but speak little to no Spanish. I was living in Costa Rica for a bit, and a white tourist couple came up to me and started asking me something in broken Spanish, thinking I was a local because of my complexion. I didn't understand what she said, so I gave them a puzzled look. That's when the woman got frustrated and said, Is everyone from Costa Rica a useless idiot? To her husband. I responded with, I'm from New Jersey, you dumb bitch. Her husband laughed. I was on an overnight train ride from the north of Sweden back down to the south. Because of a mix-up, I, an 18-year-old girl, was in a sleeper car with five 20-year-old guys. 
Because I was hanging out with a group of my American and Australian friends, I had been speaking English while I met the guys. After saying goodbye to my friends and heading back to my room, the guys started talking about how hot I was and if they should get my number or not. I had a black eye from a drunken fall, and they were asking each other what they thought had happened. Then they started talking about how one of them had a raging heart on, and the conversation just got stranger from then on. The next morning, when we got up, the train worker came by asking some questions, which I answered in fluent Swedish. The look on their faces was priceless. Not to me, but to a friend. He, Brazilian, black and slightly chubby, and his husband, white and also chubby, are in a restaurant in Thailand and ask for dessert, in English. He, I want a vanilla ice cream. His husband, I want a chocolate ice cream. The waitress, then, yells to the kitchen, in Thai, the fat black wants a white ice cream, and the fat white wants a black ice cream. My friend, then, says in Thai, and you are a very impolite lady. Worked with a German guy for a little while, who sat in the cubicle across from me. He had the habit of swearing to himself in his mother tongue whenever he got frustrated. I wasn't going to fault the guy for cursing, as I wasn't offended and no one else understood a word, so I pretended to be oblivious. One night, I'm in late, and he's having a loud phone call in English with his wife about dinner and their kids. Suddenly, he swaps languages, and the phone call becomes a mix of flirty and what I would do to use, and then talk about finding her younger sister a date to get her over a breakup. When they broke back into phone sex, this time more graphic, I decided to end it. Hey, Dieter? What? How old is she? What's her name? Who? I'm on the phone with my wife. I know. Your sister-in-law, the newly single one? Scheisse, she's... I didn't know. I figured. To his wife, in German again. I just discovered the new guy speaks German, and I think he's Gretchen's type. I'll see you in an hour. Gretchen looked like a truck. 